Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but also, as you'll see at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is made useful not only to the person who has asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now, uh, today's question um, is topical, very topical, hence I thought I would answer it nearly immediately, and uh, in, this is the second question of doom of this week. Um, but um, the, the particular question comes from Doe Master, uh, as they have signed themselves off, and they say this. Uh, dear Arco Soup, yesterday I watched the uh, Olympic torch lighting ceremony in Olympia. So did I, Doe Master. Um, I am confused though, as uh, many of the telecasters called this event or seemed to hint that it was a modern invention. Others, however, were fairly convinced or fairly convincing when they spoke about its ancient origins. Which is the case? Please, can you clear this up? Thank you. Doe Master. Well, uh, Doe Master, uh, you're quite right. It, um, it, on the surface, this may well seem to be a confusing issue, um, but I can quite uh, happily clear this up for you, so uh, stay tuned. Now, um, I suppose the first thing I would say is, is ask, ask a question in answer to your question, that is, why is an Olympic torch like a beetle? Hmm, we shall find out together. Now, you're right, yes, um, the, I, I also actually watched the Olympic torch lighting ceremony yesterday, and uh, depending on who uh, you were listening to, and which channel, and which newspaper, um, there were various uh, spins taken on the ceremony, and, and its, its antiquity, um, or not, as the case may be. Now, the, uh, there is the notion of an Olympic fire, or I suppose a pan-Hellenistic kind of fire, which was used at these types of games, in particular the Olympian Games, um, in ancient Greece. Um, it, was, it would be uh, sat in place and it would mark uh, the whole span of the time of the games. And it stems from the holy nature of fire in ancient Greece, the idea that it was stolen from the gods by Prometheus, and therefore there was a, there was a, it was a, it was a, an ultimate um, achievement for for human beings, um, but it also reflected a, a very complicated uh, series of, of of associations. Not least that everybody could get on board with believing in, for example, the notion of Prometheus stealing fire. So um, it, it marked uh, un uh, uh, unity. It also marked respect for the gods. And throughout this uh, this, this time when the city states were coming together, the fire would be would be lit. Now. Quite rightly, as you as you as you suspect, uh, this uh, this is where it ends. This is where the fire connotation stops because there was no need for an Olympic torch per se um, uh, back back in the day because um, the games didn't uh, travel from Olympia to somewhere else. There were each different. You know, there were four or five um, big games events, but they weren't the Olympics, and therefore um, a fire didn't have to travel from one place to another place via torch relay. Now, um, in the, the modern um, cycle, as it were, of Olympic Games, there was an Olympic fire reinstated in uh, 1928 at the Olympics of Amsterdam, but that did not travel from Olympia. The torch relay, as we understand it today, actually stems from 1936 and the infamous Olympic Games therein. Um, the whole notion was the brainchild of Carl Diem, the, uh, one of the chairpersons, or chairmen, I guess, actually, uh, of, the, um, of the Olympic Committee uh, in that year. Um, they essentially devised uh, a relay um, which would have a ceremony at the beginning, much like the one we saw yesterday with a parabolic mirror lighting the fire, symbolising Apollo himself giving fire or, or, I suppose, lighting or commencing the games. And then the relay um, took the torch uh, took this fire from uh, Olympia to uh, to Berlin. The original um, torch relay uh, covered a distance of 3,187 kilometers. It uh, used 300, no, sorry, 3,332 runners and took 12 days and 11 nights to commence. And the whole thing was overseen by the infamous um, figure of Goebbels himself. So uh, in that sense, the Olympic torch relay has nothing to do with ancient history 
uh, at all. It was an attempt by a very specific regime in European history to connect itself with uh, ancient uh, wisdom and also perceptions of uh, a certain hereditary right to, uh, to, to, to enlightenment um, as, as was seen at the time. Now, um, this clearly, those notions are clearly a load of rubbish, but um, this is where, or this is why, rather, I say that, um, <laughs> that the Olympic torch is like a beetle. Um, the, uh, the Volkswagen Beetle is one of the, uh, the, thing, the lasting things to come out of that time and place, essentially the Third Reich in Germany. It was, it was commissioned by people high up um, in power at the time, and, uh, and in that sense, it's one of the few... That's about it. good is probably the wrong word to say. It's one of the few lasting things which we no longer associate with them, which has come into the modern world. Volkswagen Beetle and the, um, <clears throat> the Olympic Torch. So, even though it has slightly uh, questionable origins in that sense, it, is, it has become, nonetheless, a very, um, very well-received and very, I suppose, actually, very poignant ceremony. So, uh, so let's uh, try to uh, let's not um, let, you know, allow its origins to tarnish the event. Now, it was exciting, and there's no denying. Whenever you have a fire being lit and someone running off with it, uh, it's bound to be um, dramatic. Um, and uh, in this instance, it'll be travelling around Greece for a week, um, and then on the 17th, I believe, um, it'll be flying here to the UK. Um, in previous Olympics, actually, or, or, or one Olympics in the past, I think 1946, um, Britain uh, also um, hosted the Olympics and that time it did actually come via, uh, via direct relay and then took a boat across the channel, whereas this time it will be flying from Greece to Britain. Um, some may say cheating, I agree. <laughs> so there you go, um, Dome Master. Thank you so much for asking the question. Um, you're quite right, various people, various newscasters, telecasters and sort of um, talky types, talking heads, were saying, hmm, the ancient ceremony, but, uh, but as you quite rightly suspected, it's not as ancient as you may think, though the notion of um, fire uh, being connected with the games and the lifespan of the games, because after all, in the modern games, the, uh, the Olympic flame is uh, extinguished on the final day. Uh, the, the, this idea is very much uh, from antiquity. So there, there's, a, there's a seed of truth and and therefore uh, I think it is quite it's quite acceptable. Um, it's also as well as I say it's it's a wonderful spectacle and very poignant. So uh, so I'm quite I, I I was pleased to watch it yesterday and I'm looking forward to it coming to Britain. It should be should be fun. So there you go. Thanks once again for asking the question. And uh, there, uh, yes, if anyone else out there has any thoughts or notions or comments that they'd like to make, please do comment below. And uh, that's it from me. So until next time, guys, bye-bye.